All right, welcome everyone to How to Book a Performance. Uh, tonight's um, instructor is David Romero. Uh, he's a Mexican-American spoken word artist from Diamond Bar, California. Romero is the author of My Name is Romero, a book published by Flower Song Press, reviewed by Gustavo um, Ariano, Curtis Mares, and founding member of Oza Motley. Luis um, Bega, Romero has received honorariums from nearly 100 colleges and universities in 34 different states in the USA um, and has performed live in Mexico, Italy, and France. So we're really excited to have him lead this tonight. Um, he, um, you know, he's very connected with a lot of our teachers, um, including Hiram Sims, our director. So I'm really excited to see um, his presentation tonight. Um, with, without further ado, I'll let David have it. Thank you so much, uh, Lachey. Uh, it's it, it's a true honor uh, being here uh, once again to present for the Community Literature Initiative um, as connected to the Sims Library of uh, Poetry. Always a pleasure uh, working with you all. Um, so yeah, my name is David A. Romero, Mexican-American spoken word artist. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, which, yes, is working and it's going to <laughs> load. Yes, yes. All right, here we are. And I have a slight cold tonight, but that's not gonna stop. That's not gonna stop me. That's <laughs> not gonna stop this greatness from rolling forward. Okay, great. So once again, uh, thank you. And once again, is David A. Romero. This is how the book, A Performance. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm a Mexican-American spoken word artist. I've performed at nearly 100 colleges and universities in 34 different states uh, in the US. Uh, and not just performed, I've received honorariums, which is a very fancy way of saying that I've been paid uh, to uh, do this. Um, I've been uh, reviewed in the United States, England, Scotland, and Canada. Um, I've opened for Latin Grammy winning bands Ozo Motley and La Santa Cecilia. And um, yeah, I've actually performed live in Mexico, Italy, and in France. Um, so here's a little uh, chart that I've actually made uh, outlining some of the states um, that I've had the pleasure of performing in. And I am the author of My Name is Romero. It's available now from Flower Song Press. Uh, you can get author signed author copies at davidaromero.com, my personal website. Um, so yeah, so let's start off. How to book a performance? Well, if you just ask, you know, <laughs> Joe Schmo on the street and Jill uh, nonsense, uh, this is what they'll tell you. They'll tell you, make people come to you. And, and this, to a certain extent, is true, but it's overly simplified. You'll also hear, be famous. <laughs> Whoa, why didn't I think of that? You know, wow, that's, that's not easy. Um, but that definitely would help if, if you were already famous. Uh, and they'll tell you to get an agent, which getting an agent is actually very difficult. So I'm going to be transparent with you um, in about... I've been a professional poet or a semi-professional poet for about 15 years. Um, sometimes full-time, sometimes part-time, but always, you know, doing workshops, doing college gigs, doing this, doing that, receiving money, doing poetry. Um, and I've actually tried for many of those years uh, to get representation. And it's exceedingly difficult. Uh, uh, to find representation as a performance poet or even as a literary poet uh, for your work. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, try though. You should definitely try. And in fact, I think it's the experience of trying to get an agent which has led me to think of, well, what would an agent do? So a lot of my thought process emerges from that. Um, all right, so let's go over some of the places where you might potentially book a performance. Um, an open mic venue or an ongoing poetry series. 
So the difference, what I would say the difference between these two things are the open mic uh, would be more regular, maybe once a week, every other week, maybe once a month. And an ongoing poetry series is something like more what I would see is an organization puts it on and it might be every other month or it might be three times a year. Or it, it would have a varying schedule. Maybe there are multiple uh, open mics or multiple programming series. Um, so that's definitely something to look for as well. Um, you also look, you want to look at places where they might not have something going on already, but there's the opportunity to put something on there. So that would be coffee shops, bars, bookstores. You're gonna also wanna think about private events, uh, birthday parties, weddings, graduations, anniversaries, funerals. I've been asked to write poems for funerals. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it is a reality there. Um, Libraries, definitely something to consider. Um, a great opportunity to get your book in very often at the same time, or maybe they've already picked up your book. Um, festivals and conferences. So now you're, um, and colleges and universities, which is really my joy. That's really uh, my bread and butter right there. Um, and, and lastly, at corporate events. Uh, which will be interesting to get into with our last point. So as an opening activity, actually, I think this would be fun, is in the chat, if you could actually, I would like for you to list three local places. So Southern California or greater Los Angeles area, let's say, list three local places you would like to perform at that you haven't performed at already. And I'm gonna go ahead and start or uh, post here. I'm gonna say uh, Staples Center, <laughs> or actually I think it's Crypto Arena. Uh, let's see here. Um, and uh, let's see here, uh, the Getty. I, I've never performed at the Getty. So that would be that would be really exciting. Those those would definitely be on my local wish list. Cal State anywhere. Great, great. Thank you. Very good. Very good. I love the engagement here. Um, I've also I've actually never featured at the Greenway Court Theater. That's been a long term goal of mine. I actually started performing poetry at the Poetry Lounge. Um, and I've never been able to feature there. So that's definitely on my personal wish list. Somewhere in Pasadena, great. USC, yes, very good. LA Public Library, the last bookstore, yes, very good. Hollywood Bowl, yeah, all right, all right, excellent. Joshua Tree and Coachella, sweet. Dinner parties, nice, nice. That's, yeah, that's definitely interesting. On a cliff, okay, all right. All right, so we're getting some responses there. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and continue. There we go. I would like for you to list two dream locations. So this is outside of Southern California. This is across the country, across the world uh, that you would like to perform at. So yes, New Yorkian Cafe, beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I, let's see here. I'm gonna say, um, uh, I'm gonna say the Louvre. <laughs> and I'd like to perform, uh, yeah, at Tail. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. And I'm gonna say I would like to, perform at Teotihuacan um, at, at having some kind of, you know, reading there. Beautiful, the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. Yes, yes, Mexico, Mexico, beautiful, beautiful. All right, great. So London, yes, yes, excellent, excellent. And so as we continue to think about these places and our dreams and our aspirations, 
you know, I want you to think about, do I know anyone at that place? Do I know anyone by reputation who's been to that place? And if I don't, how might I research that? How might I find out more about how to get to that place that I want to get to? So that's, we're going to be, be running with that uh, idea throughout. All right. Uh, but for local readings, uh, it's definitely worth mentioning that there are many grants from poets and writers. Um, so here's the website right there. Um, maybe good to take a, a snapshot. This will be recorded. So just in case you miss anything, um, there's that for you. Um, but yeah, just to let you know, so, so what this mini grant is really for is for uh, bookstore readings, maybe workshops with K through 12, um, maybe a coffee shop, something like that. A library definitely is, is, a, is a key one that you could get these kind of grants for. But your maximum amount is really three hundred dollars. Takes six weeks, so it's 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 great. It's a great opportunity to start getting paid um, to do what you love. But it's not going to uh, you know make you rich. You're not going to be able to quit your day job overnight uh, with that. Um, so let's talk about open mic venues. So here's a list of some, and some of these are actually inactive or semi-active. Uh, these are constantly changing. Uh, with the pandemic and coming back. Um, but this is a good list to do some research and see what's active and, and what days and where. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, personally, once again, the Poetry Lounge is where I got my start. Um, and, and my friend, David Judah One Oliver, runs Lion Life Mind State. So I definitely suggest you check that out. Oh and, oh, and there's Obsidian Tons, of course, uh, in Pomona as well. Uh, I believe it's every second Saturday. So yeah, great all over Southern California. There are many, many open mics. All right, and where you can get more information about all of these, uh, there's a Facebook page that's somewhat inactive. It's called Los Angeles Open Mics. Uh, you can also use the Sims Library of Poetry uh, as, as a... Um, resource. Uh, Los Angeles Poets Society also uh, regularly shares information about open mics. And Brian Dunlap and his website, Los Angeles Literature, is actually extremely thorough. Brian attends, I can personally attest uh, that Brian attends many, many, many readings. Um, yeah, and so he knows about most of the venues that are out there, uh, both new and old. Um, all right, so how to book a feature at an open mic. Um, well, generally, what you would do is you would go, you would sign up, just like everyone else, check it out, you know, pay money if you need to, be kind, you know, do your thing, do it well, um, once, twice, three, three times, four times, uh, you know, wait to get asked or after a few times, you know, maybe you, you approach at the event, uh, the host to ask them. Um, and great. Yeah, there's there's another great resource for that as well um, in the chat. Um, yeah. Another thing that you can do is, you know, find their social media accounts. If you're really aggressive, if you're really on it, uh, send them. Uh, or find their website, find their email, send them a direct message. And what you want to send them is this. Um, you'll want to let them know that whether or not you've performed with any of the features that they've featured. So you can find that out through sometimes in the description. They have a list. Uh, maybe they have flyers that have pictures of their past features and, you know, look and say, oh, yeah, yeah. I've I featured with this person or that person. I've read with that person. Okay, great. That's the kind of thing you want to write. You want to message, you know, and send them. Um, and of course, you're going to want to send them links to videos, news articles, links to buy your books, your website, your socials, all of that stuff. You want to blog postings, uh, anything that features you and your poetry work. So you want to keep compiling this kind of stuff. 
Um, another way, actually, I forgot this last time, but yes, this is very essential, is that very often uh, one of the best ways to get featured is to be a host. So, you know, a lot of hosts actually trade favors. And a lot of the times that's how you build your reputation within the poetry community is by being either a venue host and or organizer of events, of one-off readings. And through that, you build that credibility, you build that reputation and people get to know you. Um, so yeah. There's also the ongoing poetry series. So this is what I what I was saying is that maybe it's not, you know, on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. Maybe it's a little bit more separated. Um, and you can argue, you know, the definitions of this. This isn't, you know, that clear. But LA Poet Society is an organization that puts on a multitude of events. So some are open mics, some are featured readings, some are workshops, Sims Library, of course, the same thing, a multitude of programming. La Palabra is more of a regular open mic uh, in Highland Park, but sometimes that differs. Um, Rap Salon uh, was out there, has been out there, say word, a youth open mic. Uh, Street Poets is a nonprofit organization that puts on a variety of events, uh, mostly for youth, but you might check something for adults, get lit, mostly once again for youth, but you might find something for adults. And yeah, there's just check, you know, your local neighborhood place. You might find something that's going on there, whether it be regular or sporadically. Um, and, and now, of course, coming out of COVID, there's this great new phenomenon of there are so many readings you know, we wouldn't have imagined 10 years ago that people would regularly be reading with poets from all over the world, but that's something that COVID has really changed um, for the, and for the better, um, I would say. It's really, really beautiful. So don't neglect any opportunities uh, that you might have to read with poets um, in other states and in other countries. Uh, coffee shops, bars, and bookstores. All right, so you'll want to, you know, when you enter in, you want to ask, well, do they already host live events? If they don't, there might be a reason for that. They might not not be, uh, you know, so open to it. Um, if there are, you will want to attend a couple, same, look at the flyers, look at the listings. Um, very often what I like to do is I like to be very um, systematic about this. So. I'm not sure there's an article uh, that I wrote for LA Taco talking about how I got myself into over 50 bookstores uh, without an agent. Um, and the way that I did that is by doing, is researching by typing in bookstores, L Los Angeles bookstores and compiling a list and then building out a map, planning out routes so I could visit as many in one day as possible. And it took me many, many, many days, um, but I, I probably about a hundred um, in the greater Los Angeles, Southern California area. And that's the kind of thing that you can do. You are capable of doing that. Um, yeah, but if you attend any of these places, ask them if they would be interested in having a, an open mic, if they don't have an open mic already, um a showcase so that's that's what we also call a group reading so this goes to the the differentiation between if you're more of a spoken word artist you call what you do performance if you're more of a page poet it's a reading so similarly we have different phrases um in all of this but yeah a showcase or a group reading is when there are a number of poets uh, together on the bill, uh, being advertised in advance. Um, a slam is a poetry competition. Some people think that a slam is just an open mic with spoken word poetry, but no, slam literally means competition. A um, little mix up people have uh, very often. Or a featured reading and or talk from you. So this is the kind of thing where you perform for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 
you know, and, you know, hopefully bringing someone to do Q&A um, is a great way to liven it up. Uh, very often you bring in like a, a professor uh, to ask you some questions. So if you have a friend or an old professor, um, you know, that's, that's a great way. Um, did you do that before you had your book or before? Um, both, both <laughs> for different reasons, for different reasons. That was a great question in the chat from Mauricio. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, so yeah, now we're going to get into private events. Um, so this here, this picture is actually a listing, um, from gig salad. Um, so yeah, so one thing you're going to notice is that some things will start to generate the more active you are. So when performing at open mics, this, uh, people are going to come and they're going to ask you to write poems. They might ask you to do private events, maybe dinner parties, Alma, uh, if you're lucky. Um, and also a way to be proactive about this is to uh, list yourself on Gig Salad or The Bash. And, you know, I've never had a tremendous amount of luck with these. I don't I don't really enjoy doing private events, uh, honestly, um, but those who are able to make it work um, have found great amount of success with that. Um, in our last session, we had a number of poets ask about uh, typing, lo doing live poetry um, can be very lucrative um, in terms of grants, in terms of getting yourself into places like the Getty. Um, so yeah. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, Gig Salad and The Bash as websites um, actually charge, uh, or, or there are free versions and then you can get your upgrade, but this is a great way, if you don't have a website, it's a great way to prepare you for having a website because um, they're gonna ask you for pictures, descriptions of things, and the more information that you give, the better typically on these things about yourself and about the services that you can provide. Um, yeah, your photos, your bio, video, audio links, information about you and your services. Um, oh yeah, so okay, we've been talking about this. Wait, do you mean you don't have photos or video? Oh no, oh no. Well, get yourself some headshots. Uh, you can ask a friend, book someone from, you know, Gig Salad, Fiverr, whatever it might be. Record some videos. You definitely want to do this. Um, and generally, the rule is, is that um, a lot of the videos that I've made, so you could, you know, Google David Romero Poet, check out the videos. Um, if you find or you go to my website, you'll find my videos. I've made like music video type videos. And the reason for this being is that these are the types of videos that are impressive. They're the ones generally with the longest wait time or they, uh, not wait time, but watch time. They average out um, being the most engaging. You know, just think about yourself. What kinds of things generally do you like to watch and do your friends like to watch and your family? Um, and generally, there are more of these more movie type things, music video, poetry videos. So if you have a friend who's a filmmaker or you yourself are a budding filmmaker or you just like being creative, this is a great opportunity. So I, I cannot recommend that enough. I've heard from so many people at colleges, especially who say, that they will not even bother reading an email unless there's an attachment for a video. They will make their decision 100% on the video, not on anything else. They won't read any of this stuff. Um, yeah, and you shouldn't wait for others to record you. And even as I said, the best thing is to get these poetry video, music video type videos a single take, that means one frame, you know, of just you performing somewhere is, is good too. It's definitely better than nothing. Um, so video, video, video. Um, so yeah, 
if you don't have a professional uh, 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 bio as a poet, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> this is a good template. Uh, blank is a, so your name is a. And this is really where I like to put in um, my identity. So for example, I say Mexican-American spoken word artist. So if you have an identity or an interest in a, either an identity or a strong interest or a number of identities, this is where you forward that. This is where you want to convey. If you have a brand, if you have, you know, you need to have something. You're not just no one. You are someone. You have an identity that you want to share with the world, a story, tell the world what you're about immediately in your first sentence. And then from where you're from, blank has your name. And this is where you list your accomplishments. You know, do you have a degree or if, if you have more of an impressive poetry resume, you know, what books you've published, what awards you've won, where have you been written about, where have you performed that's impressive, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the next would be some of the people you've worked with. You know, these could be some famous people that you've performed with, that you've organized events with or for. Um, that kind of thing, you know, just, just like job references and any other kind of job, you want your references. Um, and then finally, this is where I like to end. I've read a lot of poet bios that start with as a blank, blank would like to. So this is your social cause. This is your philanthropy. This is your message. This is how you want to change the world. And I like to end with this because I think personally it makes for a cleaner um, and an easier um, way to read uh, this kind of journey. But, you know, ultimately it's up to you. But personally, I find this to be the most professional format um, and, of course, a way to contact you. Um, so let's talk about libraries. Um, so yeah, once again, go in, email. Um, now, something to keep in mind with libraries is that they're private and they're county and, and they're all kinds of different divisions. So, you know, there's a lot of red tape sometimes involved. Um, and which county the library belongs to will determine what kind of events they book and how long it all kinds of details but here's something once again this is a helpful link uh the la county library program application so this is for a link this is a link down below for you to apply um if you're interested in being uh, uh potentially uh, asked to go into the la county library system very difficult system, very difficult system. Um, and then here's one, uh, this is a link to get your books in there. Um, so let's talk about festivals and conferences. Now I'm gonna look at the chat. Okay, great. Do libraries ever, that's a great question. Um, yes, in the end, you have to get in, you have to get through their process. So once again, your likelihood of getting through that process is going to depend upon if they're a private library or if they're a public library. Public library, there's going to be longer waits, more red tape, um, but you could end up making a lot of money um, at through the public library system if you're able to get in. Um, so definitely, I encourage you uh, to, to do that. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about festivals and conferences. Um, so something, yes, it's very important. Um, so I was talking about identity earlier and something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand as they look to um, advance their career as professional poets is that one of the most important ways to build your career is through uh, legitimizing yourself as a public intellectual. 
as a public speaker, as um, not just a creative, you know, as creatives, you know, our natural inclination is, is to perform, is to write, is to, you know, be very passionate and, and then relating to other people, you know, oftentimes comes second, but that's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge that comes into play. So you're going to want to think about the types of events that you might go to that might fit your interest, that might fit the themes of your poetry. What is your poetry about? It is, is it about uh, gender, race, ethnicity, poverty, class? Um, is it about LGBTQ plus issues? Is it about hunger and homelessness? Is it about uh, motherhood, fatherhood? Um, these are the kinds of things. And the more you think about it, you say, okay, yeah, actually I do tend to write more about these certain types of issues um, or look at the world in this certain way. For example, if, if you also study medicine and your poems uh, tend to incorporate a lot of medical jargon, you're going to want to think about getting your work to literary journals that tie into medicine, to conferences uh, that tie into medicine. You want to be the poet at the medical conference. So that's just one example, and there are many. It goes for just about any kind of thing you could think of. You want to be the poet at the event of the professional. Um, yeah, and then once again, that's that's what I was going over there. Um, look for festivals and conferences at local colleges. It's a great place to start. Um, and and very often, I I definitely suggest to start off by volunteering. It's very difficult to get paid for this right off the bat. You have to have a huge social media following, or or know you know be related to the organizers, be a friend of the organizers. And so if you don't have any of those connections, I strongly suggest to you, if you're just getting started out and you wanna get into festivals and conferences, volunteer, um, tell them that you uh, would really like to be part of their conference. Um, and that's a great way then you can put that on your resume that you did a certain conference. So let's talk about colleges and universities. Now I'm going to check if you what if you write about more than one thing. Is it best to pick a, a primary focus? Now that's a great that's a great question. Um, I would say um, you know your your focus might change from event to event to conference to conference. It is definitely possible to be a number of different things um, as an artist as as a public speaker. Um, but you'll definitely want to have a few uh, uh, or just a handful that are more that you focus on more than the others. The, the more things you are, the harder it is for someone to understand um, who you are and what you do, the more difficult it'll be to book your performances. Um, so let's talk about colleges and universities. All right, so let's talk about two organizations. There's NACA um, and there's APCA. And honestly, once again, just like the agent thing, I've never been to either of these uh, conferences, but I have uh, many friends who have gone and they have found varying degrees of success. Um, so they host a national conference and they host region specific talent conferences. And there are some organizations um, at colleges and universities that book exclusively through NACA. Um, so that's definitely that wall there. Um, so th you might find that being a difficulty that you run across. Um, I have many a time, um, but yes. Um, so let's, you know, some of the uh, uh, drawbacks to these conferences are there are membership fees, there are exhibition fees, there are showcase fees. So your exhibition fee is having a table. Um, you know, let's say you choose not to showcase, um, which is pr performing your work. 
exhibition is having the table or very often if you showcase, you pretty, pretty much wanna make sure you also have an exhibition, but your showcase is performing in front of a number of people who might have 20 universities they, they could decide to book you for. So one 30 minute, one 20 minute performance could get you a whole, you know, tour, uh, basically. So, you know, if you do have a lot of money, if you find yourself having a lot of money, it might be worth considering uh, showcasing and or exhibiting at one of these conferences. Um, but you will also want to consider that there will be travel, food, and lodging expenses. So no one's going to reimburse you uh, to, to go to these conferences, unfortunately. Um, it's a great, great gamble. Uh, personally, I, or actually, I heard a story of an artist who performed, who booked over 100 shows. Um, and I believe this because he was an extremely successful spoken word artist. And he said the very next year that he went to NACA, he booked maybe five. So just think about that. It's the highs and the lows. It's quite a gamble. But if you do, you know, find success there, you'll be very successful. Um, and yeah, so let's get to this point. So let's think about this, right? One of the best ways to, when you're thinking about booking a performance, is that you want to think ultimately you're preparing yourself for the kind of environment where you would entertain a crowd, potentially of hostile people or indifferent people, for 30 minutes. So, what does that look like? That looks like maybe having poems memorized. If you have a book, having your poems dog eared and ready so that you can read them as efficiently as possible, or you have your poems all arranged, so you can read them as efficiently as possible. That also means explaining, telling a story, telling personal anecdotes, telling jokes, uh, explaining clearly and succinctly what the metaphors of your poems are, what the social messages of your poems are. So that's the importance of preparation and in thinking about that and not just in these talent conferences but that kind of preparation is what you'll want to bring to a lot of your performances and of course a lot of us were not quite there yet but just keep in mind that that's something to slowly build up to uh, is that level um, and potentially ultimately right we want a special maybe an hour right? An hour of performances, an hour and a half. I've been on for an hour and a half before this. Yeah, whole thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so how do you circumvent this? Well, this is what I do. I contact student life initiatives, campus departments, student organizations directly. And these are the ones who won't exclusively book through NACA or APCA. They don't exclusively book through the talent uh, organizations. And what I do is I look for public emails. I look at school, student organizations. Generally, that brings me to something. And I sift through the organizations that I think are most likely to book me. So, so anything poetry, English, uh, program boards, student entertainment boards, student activities team. Uh, and then I look for more identity specific groups. So Black Student Union, Latinx Student Union, uh, Hispanic Student Association, you know, these kinds of organizations. And then the more of the subsets of all of those different um, identity organizations I look for um, to potentially book me. Um, literary magazines, of course, is another great one. Um, so yeah, send them an email. Um, and you'll want to make sure that email has an introduction. Hello, my name is so-and-so. I'm a such and such artist from such and such place. Uh, yeah, that's the short bio. Um, your relevant links, your videos, audio, press, a website. 
And you want to end with, I hope you will bring me to your campus. Um, and now, nowadays, definitely, you want to make sure to mention that you will do services virtually. You'll do uh, virtual performances and virtual workshops. Uh, all right, we have a question. English Graduate uh, Association at DH, they also produce in Jand Magazine and the Spring Literary Conference. Yes, yes, great. So yes, as an example, and there are literally thousands of these organizations across the country. Um, in fact, very often they'll ask me, they say, oh, how did you find us? And I said, well, I systematically <laughs> email every organization I could find at every college campus in the country, and even ones in Japan and England and a few other countries. Um, but yeah, there are many, many. Um, let's see here, let's move on. All right, um, yeah, so let's see here, yes. And another way, something you can do is if you find that you can try to find them on social media, these um, administrators, uh, these student organizers. Uh, you can find larger networks they belong to and the people in those networks. And if they're professors or student administrators, you can find the conferences that they attend because they all uh, attend various conferences. There are writing conferences, political conferences, identity-based conferences, and these are the kinds of places and events that you would like to exhibit at and present workshops at and perform poetry at. And these are also places uh, where you can secure a lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, great, lot of, a um, lot of bookings. Um, yeah, and really one of the biggest things that you'll want to do in all of this, I really encourage you as, you book a performance, it's not just about booking the one performance, but that's why I stress the importance of being kind and being professional and showing up on time and not causing problems and all of these kinds of things, is that uh, not just for the good of it, although it is good to be good, um, it also helps to set a path towards a working relationship that will go on in the future and repeat bookings. And that's ultimately what you want to build with a number of people out there. Uh, yeah, so also what you wanna do is you wanna prepare a press kit, a price sheet, a sample contract. Uh, a press kit could be a PDF or video. Um, so my friend, David Judawan Oliver, the first Poet Laureate of Pomona, he actually had a video press kit. So that's definitely something you can do as well. Um, mine is a PDF. I like having something that can be printed out. Very often people tell me that they read my email and then they take it into a meeting with their board or with their superior. And very often the easiest thing for them to do is to have something printed out that they then, you know, show those other people. Um, your press kit will want to have your headshot, performance photos showing that you have a history of doing this and maybe you're dynamic, you know, <laughs> you're really, you know, uh, impassioned or you're really wise, you know, whatever it might be. Um, a list of places you've performed at is usually good in there as well. It, once again, news articles, uh, flyers. So you really, you want to collect, you want to collect and keep all of the flyers of all the shows you've done. It's very, very important. You want to establish a history of what you've done and where. Um, yeah, sample contract. It's going to have your name, a description of services, date, time, and location of services, a commitment to conducting yourself professionally. You're not going to do drugs and alcohol. You're not going to uh, uh, say anything that's problematic. Um, and you're going to have a tech writer and a hospitality writer, uh, a signature and a date. Um, so let's go over what is a tech writer. A tech writer includes your uh, concern to have a microphone a microphone stand, sound system, 
access to a computer if you're going to do a presentation, projector and a projection screen, once again, if you're going to do a presentation. Uh, but it is worthwhile to put microphone and microphone stand. Specifically, I find it's very important to, uh, to make sure to ask for a cordless because very often they'll try to give you the, the wearable microphone and that is awkward. The one you put right there and as a poet, you're used to the handheld or the wired mic. Um, so yeah, I definitely it's, it's important to ask for these things specifically um, if you're at this level. Um, and a remote clicker uh, if you're doing a presentation once again or a workshop. Um, your hospitality writer. So this is all of the good extra little pluses ride to and from the airport, maybe travel arrangements made on your behalf, dietary preferences, stuff like coffee and water, promotion for the event. So something that I have in my hospitality writer specifically is I have the request for an interview um, either in advance of the event or following the event through a student newspaper or campus uh, news source. Um, and also that, that there be a flyer. There has to be a flyer. I will not do an event at a college campus unless there's a flyer that's made. And I will make a flyer, but there's a stipulation in my contract that they have to pay me $50 to make a flyer. <laughs> they won't make a flyer. So yeah, there has to be promotion, 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 promotion. Um, green M&Ms. I don't know. No, I don't ask for them, but I've, I've heard of crazy stories involving food and other things. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah, so we've gone over everything. We've gone over performances, workshops. Oh, well, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Yes, colleges and universities. Let me break up different types of services that you can get. So you have your poetry performances or readings. You have your workshops. So the workshops are interactive. This is where you have students write or engage in um, acts of self-care, acts of therapy, acts of reflection, um, acts of, of creation of various art, uh, whether it be poetry or you incorporate the fine arts into your workshops as well. Uh, maybe some acting, that's, that's another thing that people do, performance-based uh, exercises. And then you have the requests for presentations. So there are non-interactive. So this, for example, has been mostly a presentation. It's been mostly non-interactive. I've tried to incorporate a few things here and there, but mostly just talking at you, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's what a presentation is. Um, hosting, you can host an open mic, a showcase, a slam. Once again, the slam is the poetry competition. And um, when you're seeking your colleges and universities, I encourage you to choose those that you could start off, right? Everyone has a different philosophy about this, but if you're just getting started, you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's a great big world. How am I gonna start? Well, some people argue that the best way is to start local. And, and I would definitely agree, you wanna have at least a few you're probably gonna to want to have at least a few local college uh, shows under your belt, ones that you physically you know, travel to, those that'll be the most convenient for you to visit. Um, these could be ones that you have some connection to. Maybe you're an alum, maybe one of your siblings uh, attends, maybe you, your parents attended, you know, something, some kind of connection to it. Um, or you can start with the ones that you've always wanted to visit. Why not roll the dice? You know, it's a great way to be excited, get started, um, get wrapped up in the moment. Uh, those are, that are the most prestigious, once again, why not? Um, those that are the most liberal. So this is actually something that I cross-referenced. I was thinking about, it's like, okay, yeah, red and blue states, okay, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a liberal guy, so I'm going to start with the, you know, the more low, liberal states. Okay, which ones are the most liberal? Um, or, and then cross-reference. So I'm Mexican-American, I'm Chicano, so my poetry is Chicano-themed. And so 
what I try to look for or what I would most target are colleges, organizations um, that have an overlap uh, between uh, Chicano and liberal. So, you know, high concentration. But really, like I said, I email them all. I email colleges and universities in both red and blue states. And that's probably the reason why I've been to so many, 34, which I don't, I don't know of any other poet that's been to as many states as I have, but you know, it's just a thing. Uh, yeah, all right, so yeah, so this gives um, a look of, of what, the, how I advertise my services on my website, performances, so the themes, and then a picture, a price, boom, explains, okay. Great, all right, workshops, picture of me doing workshops. So you can see some of the themes of the workshops that I do. Boom, once again, price, explanation. Presentations, these once again are the non-interactive uh, ones. Price, hosting, hosting, all right, let's get into our last section, uh, which is corporate events. So the last time I was here, I had actually never done a corporate event. Um, I always thought I was too political, that it would never happen, but I actually got approached by someone. I got approached by a nonprofit that puts on uh, conferences for, uh, to encourage diversity, uh, the promotion of diversity. Uh, within the uh, corporate sector. Um, so yes, that was for the Association of Corporate uh, Community Professionals or no, Corporate Citizenship Professionals. That's right, that's right. So I did uh, their virtual conference last year, uh, was really exciting. Um, how to book corporate events. Okay, we do have it. Okay, great. Yes, thank you so much to everyone. Um, how much we should charge? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So let me, uh, before I move forward, there was actually a really great question in the chat. How much should I charge as a beginner? Um, so I would recommend that as a beginner, that you charge as little as a hundred or two hundred dollars. And that might not even seem worth doing. For some, um, some people might tell you you're crazy or you, you sorry, sometimes uh, that word uh, can be problematic. Um, but yes, that, that it might not be worth to do for a hundred or $200. Um, but I think, you know, really the important thing is to build the resume and slowly work your way up from a hundred to 200, from 200 to two. 50, 250 to 300, 300 to five, five to six or 750, 750 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, 4,000, on and on and on and on. And the more you go up, the higher it is. You'll see, you'll see that the jump from 100 to maybe about 500 is relatively easy. Um, that seems you know, difficult to say, but it's really one trying to get above 500 consistently. That's very difficult. Um, 30 minutes to two hours. Yes, it's the same for any duration. And the reason for that being, um, the reason why I put that is there are institutions that regularly are trying to uh, extract more value from you as a performer um without paying you uh what you want with without paying you the value that you're looking for and that's going to be up to you a lot of people are very comfortable with fluctuating their prices um but me that's one of the things that i get very frustrated with that's why i say you know i'm going to perform for at least 30 minutes i'm not going to go to a campus for anything less. I'm not going to travel to another state to perform for less than 30 minutes. That's not worth my time. So I'm going to perform and 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 
And I'll actually be comfortable if they come and they say, actually, we really need you to pay for 20 minutes, or we, we really need you to perform for only 20 minutes. We're still giving you the thousand dollars. I say, great. But what I don't like is them using a smaller amount of time because if you show that you're you're ready to adjust price with time, that's when they start, oh, well, how much for five minutes? How much for 10 minutes? How much for 15? You know, you, you catch my drift. Um, so that's why I, I do it that way. Um, but yeah, corporate events. Um, so yeah, so we have um, some examples of some poets who do corporate events there. Um, and yes, once again, you can contact companies, ask them. Um, you know, it's very similar to festivals and conferences, but specifically, now this is really important. This is actually the important thing for corporate events. If you want to be a corporate event speaker, these are the three topics that you have to be ready to present upon. And these would also be good uh, for colleges. Uh, you know, the, the more you could just do these, the most simple version of these that you could think of. Um, the, the, the uh, let's say the, the least uh, uh, polarizing politically version of these that you could think of and the, and the most directly communicated version of these that you could think of, uh, the more uh, bookings that you'll that you'll tend to get. Um, but yes, they are leadership, diversity, and communication. So those are the three main themes uh, that corporate events book and also your more mainstream collegiate events. All right. So yeah, so yeah, so for an example, you know, you would use your poems as a way to tell a story, take the audience on a journey to understand, you know, your understanding of leadership, your understanding of diversity, your understanding of communication, in what, which, whichever one of those three topics it might be. Um, so yeah, so once again, we're going back. So open mic venues, coffee shops, bars and bookstores, private events, libraries, festivals and conferences, colleges and universities, and corporate events. So let's go through some final tips. Um, what I really encourage you to do, what I think is very important is we talked a little bit about pain or about uh, uh, pricing. And that's really important, ties into this, identifying tiers of success. So, so knowing, that very often what you can demand is dependent upon the success that, that you've achieved. So if you're just starting now, you know, you might be able to get that large chunk of money, but it's more likely that you're gonna have to start and just build over time. Um, but yeah, so you wanna think about the tiers of success it, that you've achieved and other people have achieved. So this is what you find by reading going to their websites, reading their bios. Okay, you know, what, what kind of things have they done? Um, performances, grants, book sales and distribution, awards and residencies, film, television, radio, et cetera. Um, oh, before we go there. Okay, so why is this? A, this is so important to know because sometimes when we're on the outside looking in, we have a tendency to think of, you know, there's beginners, and there's like successful people. And then there's, there are, you know, really there are superstars out there somewhere. But in reality, there are all kinds of different tiers. There are all kinds of different levels. And each one is very important. And you might skip one or two, but usually people build their way up. Um, so yeah, don't be limited by that. Um, if, if, you know, you are catapulted, um, you know, enjoy the ride. Um, but if not, then it is, it is useful to know that you can build from one thing to the next, to the next and keep climbing. Um, so yeah, so here's a tip then. I encourage you to lurk 
the websites and social media accounts of poets. Gain info on places to perform, opportunities to sell books, awards to win, presses to be published with, etc. And the funny thing about this is that people actually ask me for tips all the time um, on how to be a poet. And one of the poets who asked me the most amount of information, he actually started doing this immediately. <laughs> I turned my head. I said, wait a second. I just performed there. I just performed there too. You know, something like three or four of the places and the people that I had just finished working with, he was now working with. It was like that Kanye West song, you know. Now, oh, now Jay's got a song with Coldplay. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, is that this particular artist who did that um, eventually has built out a career where he's done things that I, I've never done. Um, incredible things, incredible things. And so even if you start on this journey, you can build out of it. And then, you know, everything starts to gain momentum. Um, so yeah, it's important to remember that. It's important to uh, to know uh, that you can gain inspiration uh, from other poets, and that can be a way to build your own journey. Uh, final tips: activity will attract people to offer more opportunities. Definitely, um, some are going to be useful, some are going to be a waste of time, uh, but you won't know until you try. And yeah, finally, finally, everything that I've said doesn't matter if it's gone over your head or you wake up tomorrow and you totally forget. Don't worry, I've done the same. I have actually learned a lot of these things by asking people over decades. And sometimes I told them, literally, I would tell them, I don't know if I'm ready to understand what you're saying right now. But trust me, I'm trying to figure it out. So make that promise to yourself as you attend sessions like these or you ask people for advice out there. Um, give yourself the, the freedom to, to know, to be certain that although you might not understand everything yet, it will make sense to you as you continue along on your own journey. So the most important thing, the most important way to learn is by doing. So do, that's, that's, that's my best advice. <laughs> All right, so once again, my name is David A. Romero. You can find out more about me at davidaromero.com, at elmartillopress.com. Uh, Instagram is at, at David A. Romero spoken word. Oh yeah, El Martillo Press. I'm actually a publisher now, so that's very exciting. Uh, but you can find my book published through Flowersong Press on flowersongpress.com, also available at davidaromero.com. Uh, you can, you know, Venmo me money if you so choose as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and stop screen sharing and I will be here um, for, yeah, I will be here for any questions. So if anyone has any questions, uh, this will be the time for that. Oh yeah, my man, Matt Cedillo, my co-founder of El Martillo Press has shown up. He's, he's checked this out. Uh, give him a shout out. He's one of the greatest. He's one of the best out there. One of the best working poets. Uh, one of our poets that we're publishing. Uh, the, the second poet laureate of Pomona, Cesar K. Avalar, is also in the building. Uh, the author of the forthcoming uh, God of the Air Hose and other uh, uh, blue collar uh, poems, which is, is a brilliant book. And, you know, as I was talking about, it's so important to establish identity. And I, I, I have nothing but great things to say, you know, about Caesar um, crafting a body of work that so solidly is rooted in identity, rooted in some of the same themes. And so that when you read the book, 
you really get a comprehensive um, experience that's drawn out of his life and drawn out of his uh, his thoughts, his philosophy, and, and his many inspirations. Um, and that's the kind of thing that potentially, you know, you know, he's not a slick, you know, kind of guy like me with the suits and you know the the, the presentations, you know, but he could do find his own path, his own way of presenting that kind of body of work um, and that kind of through, you know, activities. And he's got an open mic. You should definitely check that out. Um, Obsidian Tons. Um, but yes, so yeah, and I'm going to put the name of that. Yeah, so yeah, so again, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free. Um, otherwise, I think I'll just ramble a little bit more about this question of pricing, um, because that was um, so. Yes, okay, so yeah, so let's talk about actually that's something, um, yeah, that Matt brought up. He said for corporate or leadership shows in general, it is important to do a PowerPoint. So that's something I kind of glossed over um, through the presentation is the importance. Um, if you want to get more into the professional, uh, as I, or I would say slick side of things, um, as a poet, as a public speaker, is um, another journey to go in. So, for example, um, let actually let's tell a, let's tell a story here is. Um, so my, uh, my best friend uh, in poetry um, and the co-founder of, of the press, uh, El Martillo, uh, Matt Cedillo, um, is a great political thinker. He can talk on his feet for hours and just naturally give political speeches. Um, so if that's a talent that you have to be able to speak on a topic um, in, with great uh, lucidity and great clarity, um, that's a great uh, uh, skill to have as a public speaker. If you're someone like me, that maybe you need more of a guide, point to point, um, and, and you want to, your, your goal really is to bring the audience in through visuals, through music, through, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's definitely worth it to develop presentation, develop, you know, graphs and pictures and art and whatever you can do through multimedia in order to engage. A lot of what I like to do is I like to think of, so um, I graduated from the University of Southern California, USC. And um, like a lot of those spoiled children at that university, um, I watched many uh, multimedia presentations. To me, they were formative. And to me, they were the kind of thing that inspired me to want to do this work for a career. Um, and so what a, a lot of what I do is I like to put myself back into the audience, right? And, and, and remember the show I saw that inspired me so much, that changed my life, that put, my, put me on this track, um, that kind of, they call it edutainment. You know, it's educational and it's entertaining. It's your professor if your professor were a rock star. So that's what I like to think of. That's that's kind of the philosophy that I approach a lot of this. Um, <laughs> here's a great here's a great uh, question. So yeah, yeah, um, you know, uh, kind of a cautionary tale uh, with doing shows at colleges. One of the reasons why it's so difficult to be a professional touring poet is, uh, so this question, how long do colleges typically take to pay? If they are taking too long to pay, is it a good day to throw the organization under the bus on the internet? Well, if your brand is throwing hot takes, if you're particularly no, known for saying outrageous things in public and you don't necessarily care about burning bridges, then maybe that's good for you if your if your fan base is really built more on social media. Um, I, I'm not addressing Matt here. We're we're actually having a mutual laugh at at some other individuals uh, we know. 
<laughs> who do this. Um, but I wouldn't suggest it because, again, you want to maintain those working relationships over years. Um, some of the partners that I've had at universities, uh, Lorena Marquez at Cal Poly Pomona was someone who was foundational uh, to getting me, getting my career started on a regular basis. Uh, Toy Thibodeau um, at UC Riverside, another partner. This is a great question from Alma Rosa. She asks, how many video examples should we send when contacting colleges? So, I mean, I would say three. Three probably is ideal, actually. Not too many, not too little, but the reality is really one. You really just need one. You need one fire, one banner of a poem, of a recording. But I think three is probably perfect. Um, how long should the video be? Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, within the spoken word slam community, um, you of course have a time limit of three minutes. Um, but you're going to be contacting a lot of people that aren't specifically within that community. So it doesn't matter. Um, just, I would recommend, you know, in any of the general rule on YouTubes and wait times, if you ever looked at the algorithms, the longer you go on, the more, the less likely people are to stay on, um, unless you're, you know, a long form podcast discussion show. So yeah. It's best to be out within, I would say, under 10 minutes um, is probably a good rule of thumb. Um, so yeah, um, I think that about, I think people are starting, starting to leave, um, but I just wanna give a few shout outs um, and thank yous to, to Ellen, to Mauricio, Felicia, uh, of course, to Pat Sabio, Alma Rose, Caesar, um, here's one last question I'll address. Um, have you ever been approached by an entity with values or views different from yours? Did you do business with them or walk away? Yeah, this is really important. Um, just to put this into context, um, I actually, uh, for anyone who's read the autobiography of Malcolm X, Malcolm X has an anecdote about this. That Malcolm X Max, actually, most of his career uh, before he traveled uh, to Africa was built upon doing college shows. He was mostly a collegiate speaker, um, something that you might not know about him. Um, that's mostly how he made his living. Um, but sometimes uh, organ conservative organizations on college campuses or even uh, chapters of the KKK would try to book him. Um, and or because he had his philosophy of, of, of separation um, uh, uh, instead of integration. And it, but it was a separation on, you know, on equality within separa of, of better rights for African-Americans um, within that framework. It was just, it was a, a viewpoint of improving the lives of African-Americans um, without the integration, the traditional integrationalism. Uh, that we might be familiar with someone like MLK. Well, anyways, long story short is that uh, chapters of the KKK would try to conscript him in order to try to advance their own racist agenda. Um, and that wasn't, that wasn't his deal. That wasn't, he wasn't into it. Um, and through my career, I've tried to avoid the same uh, pitfalls. I've tried to avoid being booked by any organization that might be potentially trapping me um, into uh, a situation uh, like that, where I might actually be advancing the cause of someone that I don't agree with. Um, so that's very important. And uh, very often, yes, there you will. There will be times where there'll be a lot of money on the table and um, or even long-term relationships that you might have to potentially sabotage um, because looking into it, you see that, you know, either the people are corrupt or the organization isn't good or it's tied to something that's, uh, you know, problematic or exploitative. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's really important um, to stick to your values. Um, 
just in life uh, in general, uh, and especially especially as um, as a professional, as a creative, as an artist. Um, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I think I think that's it. So, uh, thank you so much. Um, once again, uh, give it up uh, for the Community Literature Initiative. Um, would we be able to watch this again? Yeah, it's been recorded. So yeah, it's still being recorded. So uh, all right, all right.